Are you excited to taste test the drink? Oh, I got a taste test. Though. Yeah, you're home. This is amazing. I think he just... Hi, Mom. Hello, welcome back to my kitchen. Happy day 16 of Vlogmas and our third Sweet Tooth Sunday. The past two Sundays I have done some sort of baking. I did store-bought versus homemade and then I did one batter four ways inspired by Happily a Housewife. This week I decided we would take a break from baking. I mentioned this earlier and I had a couple comments say that they would be interested in it and so I'm going to do holiday drinks. I feel I don't know if I can call it holiday drinks because the first two drinks are not really holiday themed. They are just two of my favorite recipes, my favorite drinks that I just want to share with you. And I also happen to drink them around the holidays. The first one is going to be a for you drink. So a personal drink. Now you can obviously double or quadruple the recipe, but it is a martini. Given the size of your martini shaker, you probably can't more than quadruple that one. Then I will do my favorite drink for a party, which is sangria. I have talked about the sangria before over on Instagram. Pretty much anytime I post a party, I make sangria. It's just a very simple recipe. It's my mom's recipe. It's delicious. So I'm going to show you how to make that and even some tweaks on it to make it maybe a little bit more holiday-y or a little bit more boozy. And then for those of you that do not drink alcohol or if you're looking for a fun idea for kids, I'm going to do a non-alcoholic holiday themed, this one is holiday themed, mocktail of sorts. So those are the three drinks we're going to make today. I'm going to put timestamps in the comments below with the times for each of the different drinks. So if you're only here for one of those three, you can go ahead and skip ahead. But I am going to start with the martini so that I can enjoy it while I make the other two drinks. All right, I've got you facing down. These are the ingredients for all of the drinks today. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of sort them out a little bit and organize them. I wanted to get a, you know, a nice group shot before we got started. Also, I realized that I don't have a martini shaker. I know, or not, not a shaker, a martini glass. I, I don't know what happened, but I don't have a martini glass. So I'm going to just put it in this low ball glass when I'm done with it. I actually talked about these on one of my gift guides for guys, the uh, like low ball glasses with maps on them. They're super cute. Getting distracted. Okay, so the martini that we're gonna make is very simple. It has literally three ingredients and it is called a French martini. And I feel like the first time that my mom discovered these was at the Cheesecake Factory. Now, I could be totally wrong. I'm gonna go get ice. I could be totally wrong about that, but I, I'm pretty sure that's where she learned about it. And then we started making them at home. So I'm gonna do two of these big ice cubes. I really love this ice cube tray for drinks and not having to have, you know what, maybe I'll actually, maybe I'll do three. So it doesn't water the drink down too much. And like I said, this drink is perfect for if you just want to make one or two. I, I think you maybe could squeeze up to four in here, but I am just going to make one today. Just one for me. Sam said he didn't want to get drunk, so I'm not going to make him one. Oh, 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 now you want a drink? All right, I'll double it. I'll make a second one for Sam. So I don't have one of those little jiggers that you can measure out ounces from, like they have it at bars. I really feel like I should own one of those. I feel like that's the story of this series. Hey, let me show you how to do something even though I don't own the proper tool to do it. But that's all right because there is an easy switch for tablespoons to ounces. Two tablespoons equals one ounce. And most of the time when you're making drinks, it is in ounces. So then obviously half an ounce is just one tablespoon. Now, if you have to go down to a quarter ounce, you could do a half a tablespoon. You can't really do it with teaspoons because it's three teaspoons, two tablespoons. There's, if there's a recipe that calls for a quarter of, of an ounce, just double it. Just double it and then your life will be easier. So we're gonna start with vodka. So it needs two ounces of vodka. We're gonna double it, which means we need eight tablespoons. Also here, you can use whatever vodka you want. I just, this is what I happen to have at my house. It was just Svedka. It's not my favorite brand of vodka, I'm not sure. I lost count already, y'all. I shouldn't try and talk while I do this. I think this is five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and then we're gonna do Chambord. Now Chambord, well, this is brand new, so I probably should, figure out how to open this. 
Okay, that actually wasn't that hard. Now, Chambord is a raspberry liqueur, and it is actually a little bit pricier than I remembered it being. When you see the vlog that goes up tomorrow, you will see, first off, how many freaking liquor stores I had to go to to find this. I was actually shocked at how hard it was to find this. I thought it was a lot more mainstream, but it is also a little bit pricey. So I looked up some replacement options for it. So first off, the first option is just get a smaller size of this. This is like the largest size that they offer, and I knew that I would use it, so that's what I got. But they have smaller ones as well. They, the guy was telling me there's a half size, and then there's like the mini travel one. So you could do that. You could get raspberry extract, which to be honest, given how expensive vanilla extract is, I don't know how much cheaper that would be, but it would be less alcoholic if you're going for that. You can also use raspberry juice, and you could also use black black currant liqueur, I think they said, which is less expensive because the brand they have is less expensive. So that's just an option. So this we need a half of an ounce, which really means we need a whole ounce, which means we need two of these. Now it's obviously not that alcoholic. I, I'm not sure what the proof is on this. Let's see if we can find it. It smells really, really good. Why can I find the proof? I found it. I found it like on the side. I, I, I'm going to spill it if I keep doing this. Look how pretty cool it is. Okay, so it's 33 proof. So it's not it's not that alcoholic. And then the last ingredient is pineapple juice. And that's kind of what gives it the sweetness. And it really, know, it's just so good. So we need one and a half ounces of pineapple juice, which means we need three ounces, which means we need six tablespoons. One, two, I'm not going to lose count. Three, four, five. Six. Now, same thing with the pineapple juice. You can get a big jug of it, and that's going to be less expensive overall if you know you're going to be making a lot of them at the same time. I went ahead and got the baby ones so that I wasn't going to be opening them. You know, I knew I wasn't going to be using more than one tonight. And then you shake. All right, I guess I need to go grab another cup now that Sam is having one. It sort of exploded there. Don't let it do that. And then it should be this sort of pink color. I am spilling all over the place. What is up with my shaker? I'm a mess, y'all. You, you've learned this from the past couple videos, but cheers. Oh, that's delicious. All right, let's get Sam. All right, let's have Sam try his. Woo! It's a little sticky on the bottom. Cheers. Cheers. I don't know if he's ever had a French martini. My mom and I make them, so I feel like you... <gasps> That's great. So mean. Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Yeah, it's good. Yeah? Fruity, baby. It is fruity, but it's actually very strong. And tastes like vodka. No, it doesn't. I don't really think you can taste the vodka. I taste the vodka. Hmm. Wow. I think it's delicious. It's, it is a little bit fruity and it's definitely sweet, but the best part of it, it's so easy. And so if you have people coming over, it's just like impressive. And it's like, look at this fancy martini I made with no effort. Okay, that was fun. Now we're gonna move on to the sangria. And the first ingredient in sangria is obviously wine. My biggest tip for sangria wine is get the cheapest. The cheap wine actually tastes better in sangria. I know that's crazy, but it's true. So if you have a wine that you were gifted and you don't like it, make it into sangria. If you actually open a bottle, this happened to me and my friend one time, we opened a bottle of wine and it was just not our speed, turn it into sangria. Okay, there's no way I can get the wine opener under the camera. <laughs> So I typically will go for the Barefoot brand. That's like the cheapest wine you can find or like Trader Joe's wine, even though that one's actually pretty good. I especially like Barefoot because they have the double bottle. So if you are making it for a party and you have a bigger pitcher, you can double it up. The store I ended up finding the Chambord at didn't actually have Barefoot. So I went with this Rex Goliath, which is also a really, really cheap wine. And the bolder, the better for Sangria. So usually go with Cabernet. Even if you aren't like a bold red wine drinker, it you're gonna add stuff to it, so it's gonna be fine. So first is wine. Now, before you're like, why is there no ice? So the big reason that there's no ice is because letting it sit in the fridge for a while is better for a couple of reasons. First off, you're not watering it down. You're not watering it down with the ice. But the other one is that the fruit gets to sit and settle and seep into the sangria. So I'm not putting ice because I'm actually gonna let this sit overnight until our party tomorrow. 
So the next ingredient is orange juice. I just got this little guy of orange juice because I don't want to pay for a big jug when we aren't we aren't going to be here for that many more days. But obviously, if your family drinks orange juice or you're making a lot of sangria, get the big one. But it takes a cup of orange juice. I'm using the quarter cup, and that is just because I only want a dirty one thing. And you'll see why. We need the quarter cup. Okay, the next ingredient is lime juice. And you can do this one of two ways. You can do it with, obviously, store-bought lime juice, or you can do it with an actual lime. I didn't, I wasn't sure, honestly, if we had store-bought lime juice, so that's why I bought the lime, but it turns out we do have store-bought lime juice, so I'm going to just go ahead and use that because lazy. I think we're going to kill this lime juice here. All right, so a quarter cup of lime juice, and then the next thing is sugar. Now, the amount of sugar really varies on how much sweetness that you want, and so I usually start with a half a cup, and then I stir it, and then I see how I feel because it, it depends. There's something else that will impact this. Oh, that was a lot. I'll talk a little bit more about how much sugar you might want in a second. Now, the last ingredient I lied when I said the sugar was the last ingredient is some sort of fruit. Now, now the type of fruit is totally up to you, but know that the longer you let it sit, that flavor of the fruit is going to seep in to your sangria. And so usually I try to go with a little bit of a sweeter fruit, particularly we just really like apples. That's how, how my mom has always made sangria is just by putting apples in it. So that is what I've always done is I've always just put apples in sangria. They're also, I don't know, they just taste so good when they're all soaked in sangria. And then usually the flavor of the apples, the sweet apples will soak in and it will add a little bit of sweetness. Berries are also a very good option. If you want something a little bit more citrusy, you can add a citrus fruit, but keep in mind if you add a citrus fruit, you might wanna consider a little bit more sugar because then it's going to be obviously citrusy and you need to offset that with something sweet. So the type of fruit that you use will also impact the type of sugar. Now fruit, totally optional. You don't have to add the fruit. Like it, it will still be delicious sangria without the fruit, but tastes a little bit better with the fruit. And especially if you let it sit for a little bit and let the fruit soak in. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting these apples and then we will get back to talking about some twists that you can put on the sangria. So that is all the apples that I'm gonna add in there for now. I'm trying to find my... Is our spoon dirty? No, it's okay, I can use this one. Okay, let me stir this, stir this puppy up. Give it a taste, see if it needs a little bit more sugar. Mm. No, it's, it's perfect. It's pretty perfect right now. If that's all you're going to do, like it's pretty perfect. It's warm. It, it needs to be cold. But in terms of us from a sweetness perspective, this is perfect. And once those apples soak, it'll be awesome. Now, one thing that I do like to do to my sangria is add some sort of liquor. And that, I don't mean that as like, I'm trying to get wasted, but the flavor is just really nice and it adds something to it, gives a little bit of a kick. So there's a couple of different options. The first one is classic sangria, which is adding brandy to it. I don't, I don't hate the flavor of brandy, but it's not my favorite. So I don't usually do that. In the summertime, I love to do some sort of fruity flavored vodka. Like the peach absolute vodka is my absolute favorite, pun intended. That one I will usually add. And if I'm adding some sort of sweet vodka to it, sometimes you don't need as much sugar. So just something to keep in mind. And then one of my thoughts I had was around the holidays, if you're trying to make it a little bit more festive, you can add something that's got sort of a holiday twist on it. So maybe some fireball, maybe a little bit of a cinnamon kick. You know, I feel like cherries and cranberries is always like a holiday -y feel. So maybe like a cherry flavored vodka, something like that, that could add a little bit more of a holiday flair. But otherwise, this is a great party drink. I think I could actually almost fit double in this pitcher. Maybe not, once I have the fruit. Although what I've done before is done double in the pitcher if I don't have time to let it sit. I've done double in the pitcher, no fruit, and done fruit in the individual cups when I serve it. But otherwise, it's pretty perfect. The last drink that we're gonna make is the kid-friendly or non-alcoholic drinking adult-friendly mocktail. Now, I will tell you, 
I didn't have a go-to recipe for this. Like I didn't have something that I normally whip up. If my mom, my family wants to do like a non-alcoholic option for kids, we just buy the sparkling cider, sparkling grape juice, whatever from the grocery store and call it a day. So I, I did some Googling. There were a lot of really creative mocktail options, but to be honest, are you going to do five, six ingredients, fancy concoction for your kid? Probably not. So I started Googling kid-friendly, non-alcoholic holiday drinks, and I found this adorable Santa Shirley Temple. How cute is that? So I thought we would go ahead and give that a go. And the big part of this is the decorative rim. There's something a little bit different about the actual Shirley Temple recipe too, which I'll talk about when we get there. But the big part of it is the rim. So let me see, are we supposed to make the drink first or do the rim first? Nope, it says to prepare the glass rim. So the rim is made of powdered sugar and water, and then you dip it in that, and then you add coconut to it. How cute is that? We need to grab a tablespoon that is not covered in alcohol. Good thing I have another set of measuring utensils. So we need two tablespoons of confectioner sugar and one teaspoon of water for the, there's one. Actually, I'm going to get the coconut ready before we add the water just so that it's all good to go. I'm just going to use a paper plate for the coconut. Now, the blog post, which I will obviously link below, said to use a sweetened coconut if you are really looking for it to be super sweet. If you don't like the flavor of coconut, to be honest, my grocery store didn't have that. They only had this unsweetened coconut. This is all I could find. But I'm going for the look, not necessarily the taste. I don't love the flavor of coconut, actually, honestly. So we're just going for the look. Okay. Now a teaspoon of water. I just went and did that over the sink. I feel like I added too much water. I feel like it shouldn't be that liquidy. Oh, that seems super liquidy. I've never done like a sugar rim before. I'm gonna add a little bit more powdered sugar. I know that the color is gonna go away, but in my head, it seems like it should be a little bit thicker. Than that. doing this tall, this cute tall glass. So we're going to coat the rim and the sugar mixture. I'm going to swirl it around a little bit so hopefully it gets all covered. And then we're going to dip it in the coconut. Well, it doesn't look quite as festive as theirs does. I'm not going to lie. Mine doesn't look quite as good. This might be one of those like Pinterest fails. I mean, it, it kind of looks like it. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure what I did wrong there. I might link this recipe and be like, don't ever do this. Or if you have any suggestions on how to make this better, please let me know in the comments. All right, let's just get to the actual drink portion and see how that works. So it says to fill the glass with ice. See, I feel like oof, I should make this in a different glass and then pour it in. I'm going to mess up the pretty rim by doing this. All right. And then it says to add a tablespoon of grenadine. And what she says is that this is more grenadine than you would normally put in a Shirley Temple, but you're trying to make it a little bit darker of a red color. And grenadine, I, th I think is, does grenadine expire? Hmm, who knows? So we're going to do a whole tablespoon of grenadine. And then, although my glass is big, we'll see. So then she says, instead of doing just Sprite, to do some Sprite and some ginger ale. And that is because the grenadine, you did more grenadine than normal. And it is so sweet that you need the ginger ale to sort of cut that sweetness. So I got a Sprite and a ginger ale that I'm hoping don't explode on me after traveling home on the subway. And then it says just to do half and half. I'm not gonna do quite half, because my cup, well, 
because the whole point of it is for it to be red, right? For it to look like Santa. And so you need more. The more grenadine you have, the redder it's going to be, right? Yeah, see, I want it to be a little bit more red. So oh, does she say anywhere what size glass to use? Because I feel like a tablespoon of grenadine is dependent on the size of your glass. Also, look, the coconut is falling off. <laughs> Big fail. Oh, well. I'm going to add a smidge more and then top it off with the ginger ale. I don't know if this drink worked out as well Ooh. as I had hoped. What do y'all think? We're going to let Sam taste it and see if it uh, actually tastes good, though. And then it says to garnish it with cherries and then with a candy cane if you're trying to be, you know, real festive. I'm just going to put a couple cherries on here. Maybe if I can get them out. Okay, so this last drink may have failed just a bit. It's supposed to look like Santa's hat, but a lot of my coconut has sort of fallen off. It looks like a glacier in cherry soda. <laughs> that is that is not what it's supposed to look like. And it's supposed to be like a Shirley Temple, but it might be... We'll see. I love cherries. Would you yeah. like to try it? I would, would you love like a to. straw? I will drink it all. You might want a straw so that you don't get coconut all in your... I like coconut. Oh, well, I don't, so... What do you think? It's like a Shirley Temple, good, bad. It's like a Shirley Temple. All right. So, I enjoy it. Okay, so a little bit more t grenadine than the recipe called for, but I think my cup was just a little bit bigger. I don't know what I did wrong with the rim. I'm not really sure what went wrong there, but Sam approved. I like sweet things. All right, that is it for this video. I hope that you got some great ideas. At least two of these drinks I know are a win because I love them and have made them before. This one, not so sure. I but like coconut. <laughs> Is that, all, is that all you can say? I like coconut. I like a robot. I like cherries. I like cherries. I like sweet things. I like grenadine. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and every day during December for Vlogmas. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers. What's up with my hair? Cheesy smile. Are you ready? <laughs> Do the no grenadine is. It's the uh, it's the the, the 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 red syrup that makes drinks sweet, and it's usually like cherry, and it makes that's what you put in the Shirley Temple. He's so smart. I know. <laughs>